Hi, I'm Scott, and today we're going to be creating a kick drum on the synthesizer. I'm going to show you how, coming up. This topic was on my list of to-do videos for quite some time, so I thought, you know what, today I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the kick drum video. And sure enough, this afternoon, Claudio over at Dr. Mix, along with Anthony Martinelli, showed how to do a kick drum using Anthony's pair of ARP 2600s. Well, I don't have 2600s here. Uh, I've got some other synths, and the one that we're going to use today to demonstrate this process is the Hydrosynth. Now, you may be saying, why don't you just use a drum machine? Well, back in the day, drum machines were synthesizers. If you look at a TR-808, it is literally an analog synthesizer. Actually, it's quite a few different analog synthesizers with each of those synthesizers purpose built and designed to create only one sound. So the snare sound, that sound is literally a synthesizer inside there that is designed to make only that sound. Now you can adjust things like maybe the envelope length and the, and the pitch and so on, but overall, all you're gonna get out of that is a snare sound or a clap sound or a kick drum sound or what have you. So back in the day, that's how we did drums. We used our synthesizers to come up with drum-ish sounding sounds. Of course, now we have PCM sounds. And there are actual recordings of real drums or of other synthesized drums. In fact, the TR-808 has a full, there's a full sample set of the TR-808 in the montage. But I'm gonna show you how to create your own sounds and adjust them to fit the song that you're creating in the exact way that you want, which is far more than you can do with sampled or even with typical drum machines. So when we're trying to emulate something that is a physical instrument, like a kick drum, we have to first start thinking about how does it create the noise and why does it sound the way it does? If we look at a kick drum, there's two real aspects to it. There's a large membrane that is the, the tympanic membrane, kind of like your eardrum, that vibrates and, and puts out that, that sound, but we also then hit that with a mallet or a beater, which is connected to a pedal. So that beater whacks onto the, the membrane of the drum, which then vibrates and puts out a low frequency because it's very large. So there's two aspects of the sound. One is that initial whack as the beater hits the, the drum head, and that's typically referred to as the click portion of the kick drum. And then the, the, the membrane or the drum head vibrates. Now when you first hit that drum head, it actually stretches it and puts some energy into it. And therefore, because it's stretched a little bit tighter, the, the pitch that it puts out is a higher frequency. As it slows down and loses energy, then the pitch comes down because the drum head is not stretched as tight. So typically, instead of just a, a, a thump sound, you have that click of the beater hitting the drum head, and then you hear a boom. As, as the pitch starts at high and then comes down, it goes boom, boom. So that's what we typically associate with a kick drum is that initial click or hit of the beater uh, with that, that quick drop in frequency. So let's try to recreate that on the hydrosynth. There's a specific reason why I picked the hydrosynth to do this job, and that's because the hydrosynth is bitimbral. So we can, that means it has two sounds. We can use one sound for the beater click and the other sound for the low frequency drum head sound. So let's start by initializing the patch. So there's our initialized patch. And if you listen to the lower and upper parts, have two different sounds, one an octave higher than the other, it doesn't matter, we're gonna be getting rid of those. Let's concentrate on the lower part of this patch. Now, to start this, this is gonna be our click sound. So I don't really want any, any oscillator in there, I want noise. So let's bring the noise up. And what type of noise are we going to use? Um, well, let's listen and see what we hear. These are noise oscillators that have emphasis on specific frequencies. So I want one that with not a whole lot of high end frequency in there. That will do. We can actually bring that down by filtering a bit. Next, we have to look at the envelope for the amplitude. And let's bring the attack in just a little bit so we don't get a harsh click in there. And we're gonna bring sustain down to zero and the decay is going to be the length of our hit. So 
So there's the, the sound of our beater hitting. We can actually bring that down a little bit more. We can play with resonance if we wanted to. Probably don't want to, but I do want to bring in some drive. There we go. Maybe a little bit less. The other thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to bring in a sub oscillator. So let's go back to oscillator one and I'm going to switch that to a sine wave. And then we'll just bring that up a little bit just to hear how it sounds. And let's bring that down a couple octaves. There we go. So if we hear that, you can hear without, just a little bit of bass in there. And I will say for listening to this, you probably want to have headphones because otherwise you're not going to be hearing a whole lot of this bass if you're listening on, on a phone or laptop speakers. We can actually emphasize that a little bit more if we bring in one of the effects here and then we can go out to EQ Here's my EQ there. And just emphasize the low a little bit, low gain. All right. So the, uh, the noise is maybe a little bit high. So let's change that. You know what it is? It's the envelope. Let's shorten that up a bit. There we go. So that's the sound of our beater. Before we go any further, can I get you to do me a favor? Click like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out when you do that. It helps the channel get seen by a lot more people. The more people that see the channel, the more videos I can make. It's really a win-win. Do it now. Now we'll go to the upper. We're gonna edit the upper. And now we're gonna hear only that upper because I've said it that way. For this one, let's uh, use a, tri we could use a sign, but let's use a triangle because it has just a little bit more harmonic content as you can hear. There's sign, there's triangle. We can filter that out later, but if we don't have it to begin with, we can't use it. So we'll use a, a, a triangle wave. Let's bring that down. That sounds good there. Actually, you know what we could do? If we leave that one there, then we can bring in oscillator two as well and put that an octave lower. And we'll make sure that one's also, actually, let's make that a sign. Good, okay, so now on the amplitude, again, we wanna make that soft tack in there. And then we want our sustain down to zero and our decay at whatever we think it needs to be. If we add in our beater sound. All right, so now what else do we wanna do on this? We wanna bring in that pitch. So we will do that with another envelope. So let's set up envelope three. We're gonna have the same thing. We're gonna have a zero sustain and we'll bring that up to maybe 120. And actually, we'll first we'll connect that envelope three to oscillator one. And we should probably do the same thing to oscillator two, which is our sub oscillator. So we'll connect it to both. So there's our, our a quick pitch coming down. If we add in a beater again. And as you can hear, I can actually play those notes. So you can play your bass drum or your kick drum. You can select a kick drum that, that works with the key that your song is in. But we're not done with that sound yet. So that's not sounding too much like a drum yet. Let's, let's bring some of that cut off and let's try bring some drive in. Now, if you wanted to, you could bring, you could extend your envelope three, which was going to change the rate at which the pitch drops. So if you wanted a, you know, dub kind of a. And 
And if we go back to our envelope here and bring that down, All right, so now we've got, here's our, our bass drum. It's probably a little bit high. And if we don't want to have so much of that uh, pitch in there, then we can adjust the mod matrix and just bring that down a bit. The next thing we want to do is go into our effects again, and let's bring in more EQ. And we could also bring in maybe, and then the last thing I would do is maybe bring in some compression. Just to make it stand up. And with the, the balance control in the hydrosynth, we can adjust from just a beater sound to just the drum head sound or anywhere in between. That's it for this video. I hope you like what you saw. If you do have any questions, comments, suggestions, please leave in the comment section below. And of course, if you could just take 10 seconds, click like, subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out when you do that. Thanks for watching.